my viewers, my discussion of today is about the intramuscular injection, the anatomical basis for this IM or intramuscular injection. Basically, there are three major places where a doctor or a paramedics that can give an intramuscular injection. The three major sites include the arm, the thigh, and the buttocks. And so this is just a diagram for the arm, and this is diagram of the thigh, and this is diagram of the buttock. <clears throat> so these are the three major places where a doctor or any paramedical scientist can give this intramuscular injection. So the major precaution that a doctor or any other person that can take is to avoid damage to the neurovascular bundles. So in the arm, if you can, you know, Google my uh, former video regarding the humerus, especially the proximal one third of the humerus, there I discuss the neurovascular content of the upper one third of the humerus. In the upper one third of the humerus, we have axillary nerve, and then we have posterior circumflex humeral artery that surrounds the surgical neck of the humerus. This neurovascular bundles, the axillary nerve and the posterior circumflex humeral artery, they are under cover of one large muscle, the deltoid muscle that, we have, that I have already discussed about its origin and why it inserted in my previous video. So the, the intramuscular injection in the arm is mainly given through the deltoid muscle. If you can remember my last video regarding the proximal one third of the humerus, there I discussed the different types of fibers of the deltoid muscle, where I discussed about the anterior group of fibers, middle group of fibers, and the posterior group of fibers. So the anterior group of fibers, I have discussed that they perform the function of flexion. The middle fibers, they perform the function of abduction. And then the posterior fibers, they perform the function of extension of the shoulder joint. And so, if you want to give an intramuscular injection, so you have to inject it on the middle fibers of the deltoid. So, for you to be able to do that, you have to make sure that the neurovascular boundaries are not going to be affected. So, by the time you now come in the upper part of the deltoid around this area of maximal convexity, because if you look at, uh, look at your shoulder there, you are going to find that the deltoid makes a bulge on the shoulder. So the area of maximal convexity of that deltoid, that is where you are going to put the head of the needle there, and then you now withdraw. If there is a blood inside the syringe, then you are not like you are not supposed to give that injection because you are inside the artery. And so if you draw the syringe and you find no blood, that means you are not inside the uh, blood vessels, so you can continue injecting your uh, uh, chemical or the drug that you want to give. And so on the arm, you are going to see or palpate the area of maximal convexity over the deltoid area of the shoulder, and then you give rise, you give your injection there so that you avoid, you know, given the injection in the lower part of the deltoid so that you <coughs> are not going to inject the uh, neurovascular boundaries there. Similarly, in the thigh, we also have what you call a femoral triangle. The femoral triangle there contains three important structures. We have femoral nerve by the lateral side of the triangle. We also have femoral artery, which is lying in the middle, and then you have the femoral vein that is lying on the middle side of the femoral artery. So you see, viewers, you cannot give injection on the anterior aspect of the thigh because you are very likely going to go either into the femoral vein, femoral artery, or the femoral nerve. And so anterior one third of the thigh is not the good side. Similarly, on the lateral part of the anterior one third of the thigh, it's not also a good point because you have the lateral cutaneous nerve of the thigh getting out of the abdomen to supply the lateral side of the thigh. And so if you want to give an intramuscular injection on the thigh, you need to approximately divide the anterior aspect of the thigh into three parts. That means you have anterior one-third, you have middle one-third, 
and then you have lower one third of the tie. So by the time you do that, since we have already made mention that the anterior one third of the tie, as well as the lateral one third of the tie, you are likely going to go into the neurovascular bundles. So this part is out. And so the middle one third of the tie, which is here, this side, it is free of the neurovascular bundles because the, this neurovascular bundles they go to the medial side here. So by the time you now divide the middle one third of the tie into two halves, medial half of it is likely by the time you inject the needle there, you are likely going to go into this neurovascular bundles because they pass down like this. So the lateral part of this middle one third of the tie is the best area for giving the intramuscular injection of the uh, on the tie. So this aspect here is one muscle that is bulging by the lateral side, and that is what we call the vastus lateralis muscle. So this vastus lateralis muscles muscle is the best muscle for giving intramuscular injection on the tie. So the outer half of the middle one third of the anterior surface of the tie, that is the best area for giving intramuscular injection on the tie because there it is devoid of the neurovascular bundles. You cannot give it on the lateral, lower one third of the tie because there you have mostly tendons. So by the time you inject the needle there, you are likely going to be into the tendons or bones of the lower one third of the tie. So similarly on the buttocks, which is the, actually the major site where doctors and nurses and other paramedics like to give injection. So because of it is, you know, large chunk of muscles, what we call the glutei muscles. These glutei muscles, the major portion of this muscle, there are three muscles. We have what you call gluteus maximus, we have gluteus medius, and then we also have gluteus minimus. So, but the maximus, is the one that recovers all the posterior aspect of the buttocks. And so if you imagine a vertical line, you know, dividing the buttocks, posterior part of the buttocks into two halves, medial half and the lateral half. And then you also imagine a horizontal line, you know, dividing the buttocks into upper half and the lower half. By the time you have these four ima two imaginary lines, one on the vertical direction and the other one on the horizontal direction, there you divide the posterior aspect of the buttocks into four parts, what you will call the upper outer quadrant, the lower outer quadrant, and then you have the, uh, the, the, the outer inner quadrant, and then you also have the, sorry, this is upper inner quadrant, and then you also have lower inner quadrant. You can also call it upper medial quadrant or lower medial quadrant, whichever name you decide to give is the same. So now the best place to give an intramuscular injection on the buttock is the upper outer quadrant, which is this side here, because this side is devoid of any in uh, major neurovascular bundles. So on this side, on the upper inner quadrant, quadrant or upper medial quadrant, there you have the emergence of the sciatic nerve, one of the greatest nerve that supplies, you know, the thigh and the leg. And so the sciatic nerve, as it comes out from the upper medial quadrant, it comes downward and laterally to come into the lower outer quadrant before it finally goes down into the leg. So viewers, this lower outer quadrant is not a good place for, give, for giving intramuscular injection because you are very much likely going to, you know, infuse your uh, injection content into the sciatic nerve. Uh, so, so also on the middle side here, you also have some, you know, neurovascular bundles that are coming on the uh, lower inner or lower medial quadrant. So the best option is to give the injection on the 
upper outer quadrant. So that means on the upper part of your uh, gluteal region on the lateral side. So this is the lateral surface of the gluteal region of, of the Botox, and this is the posterior aspect of the Botox. So on the lateral side, on the upper part, you can now give injection around this side, and then you are avoiding this neurovascular bondage. So viewers, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you are going to like it, subscribe to it, or share it. See you later on. Thank you.